The president is in the northern region, breaking ground on the construction of the Tamale Interchange, uh, which is intended to ease traffic and facilitate travel time in the metropolis. Um, uh, the, the construction of the Tamale Interchange is part of plans by the Urban Roads Department to ease movement in and around uh, intersections for public transport in the urban centers. Now, this, however, doesn't seem to please some residents in Tamale. Regional correspondent Martina Bugri joins me live on the phone. Martina, surely nobody would be dissatisfied with the new road, right? Hello, Martina. Martina, I hope you can hear me. Right. C tell me, what exactly are the concerns that are being shared by the residents? Um, it's a mixed reaction speaking to the residents. Something that is a very good project that has come um, is going to not only open up the place to um, the rest of the Sahel region, but it also create jobs for the people because as they come in, um, they would need hands to work and then they would employ people from the area. And so it's a good initiative. And for others too, they think that there are other priorities. And so this is probably a misplaced priority. They think that um, the area still doesn't have water. People still share dams with animals and there are no health centers. And so probably government should have been looking at addressing some of these concerns first before um, think of uh, an interchange. And so it depends on who you speak to. People think that something is a good thing, others think that it's a misplaced priority. Right, now, um, so what do they want to be done about this? If, if, if indeed they think a road is a misplaced priority, what do they want the money to be spent on? They think that, um, for instance, water is a problem in the area. Um, move just probably five, uh, ten minutes drive out of Tamale Township, and then communities are hard hit. They don't have water mm -hmm. um, from, say, December to somewhere May, where the rains have to come in. People do not have water to drink. Mm -hmm. And so they think that these are some of the issues that they thought government would look into. They know that um, the interchange is good, but they think that if they had addressed things like water health, they would appreciate it better than um, the interchange. Right. So what has the president been saying about this project? The president said he's excited that finally um, the, the, the deal is gone through, work is going to begin. Um, he says that uh, it's not only going to create jobs, but it's also going to uh, open up the aluminium industry in, in the country. He says that um, the, the, the project has been divided into 10 lots, and then it's going to be shared among the 16 uh, regions, which means that development in terms of road um, bridges, Light, water, among others, will be addressed. And so he's excited that this has come to fruition. Thank you so much, Martina. Uh, Martina Bugri, of course, uh, corresponding to us from the northern region. Meanwhile, government says calls by the minority for a value for money audit and a copy of the Attorney General's advice ahead of the approval of the Sino Hydro deal is uncalled for. The minority in Parliament yesterday asked government to suspend the launch of the two billion Sino Hydro infrastructure project, demanding a value for money audit and a copy of the Attorney General's advice on the deal. Addressing journalists at a news conference, Information Minister Kojo Nkrumah said the documents in question are available but cannot be a prerequisite for approving an agreement. There is no rule that a value for money audit is a prerequisite for parliamentary approval. It has never been the case. Um, there are two agreements that always go to parliament. There's the financing agreement, which talks about the terms of the um, financial arrangements for a particular transaction. And then there is usually the technical agreement, which deals with the technical specifications of a particular project. So the financing agreement will go to the finance committee. Then the um, commercial agreement, or I, I mean, I beg your pardon, the technical agreement will go to the committee responsible. If it's roads, it will go to the roads 
um, subcommittee. If it's a hospital, it will go to the uh, health subcommittee. And value for money has never been a prerequisite, and that's why Parliament was able to go ahead and give parliamentary approval. If, however, Parliament requires a value for money or the Parliament will request for it subsequently, there is a value for money um, um, audit report that has been prepared by, I think, the Ghana Institute of uh, Surveyors. It's been submitted through um, to the Roads Ministry, which spells out the various areas of potential risk and uh, gives a specification on it that um, the risk associated with this transaction is low, whether you talk of the contractor, the commercial terms, and all of it. So it is not true that there's no value for money audit. There is a, uh, um, a value for money audit, which is available. I've cited it myself. Um, but it is not even a prerequisite. And if um, our good friends on the minority require that, they can request for it through Parliament and it to be made um, available uh, to them. Secondly, the Attorney General is involved ab in issue whenever an agreement is being signed. So before the agreement comes to Parliament, the Attorney General is involved and has cited it and has made whatever recommendations, whatever opinion is required before it goes to Cabinet for approval and then comes to Parliament for subsequent approval. Again, when it comes to Parliament for approval, if for any reason you require um, the Attorney General to provide you with uh, um, um, a brief, you request in Parliament. It is not after the fact that Parliament has given approval. Parliament has satisfied itself that all the legal requirements have been met and has given approval. Then you say that there's no advice from the Attorney General uh, or there's no value for money. I think it's becoming obvious that our friends in the minority uh, really do not desire the sino hydro transaction to go for because every step of the way they have sought to put an impediment in our way, whether it's about not participating in the vote in Parliament or writing to the 